Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello again modelers. Today I'm just going to do a quick little video just to uh, experiment with something that one of the one of our followers put on the um, in the in the comments at the bottom and I thought it was something I knew about but I've never tried so it's it's to do with using three points of, of weight and a datum to work out what the C of G is uh, using three scales uh, and I'll be doing it on a tail dragger that I'm going to do it on this chipmunk and we'll just see how easy it works and see how it comes out so uh, so that's that's one of the things we're going to look at but quickly before I set the model up and uh, we, we do that uh, somebody else asked to see the the cradles and the shipping containers that I uh, move the models around in. Um, they're, they're quite nifty and they, they do make it fairly easy to, to move the models around. So this one I have here is, is, for, is for a, a monoplane with uh, split wings. If I take the wings out you can see they they just slot in, get the angle right. That leaves the fuselage in the cradle on its own. And then the fuselage just sits in a couple of notches to uh, you know to stop it moving around. It, it can slide forward and what have you, but uh, but it works uh, reasonably well. If you go um, how do I do this one? Oh yeah, I, I flip it upside down and rest it in these two half moon shapes um, with the tail over the end of the bench or something like that because obviously it's taller than the box. And then I can slide the wings on and, uh, and that sort of thing. So in fact, as we're going to be using this model in a minute, let's put the wing joiner in, knock the wing over, Two. I won't bother with the screws and all that sort of paraphernalia for now, or even the silver leads. I'll just put that in there like that. Sorry if you can't see all of this, but you can imagine, I think, what's going on. You've assembled the model before, I am certain. Push the other wing on, and there we go. Now the model is. I'm not going to bother with, as I say, the screws, etc. Get rid of that. See if I can turn the model the right way up without knocking the corners off. Amazing how big a model becomes in the workshop. You take it out onto the flight line and it shrinks. Doesn't seem very big at all. So there we go. Let's get the scales out, some tape. Uh, some measuring equipment and that sort of stuff and we'll um, we'll try and take the CAG of this using the three scales method. So first of all we get the three scales sets of scales out and the batteries. I tend to uh, take the batteries out when I'm not using the scales because it can sometimes be a year before I use them again and the batteries go all funny and uh, can damage the scales completely. So, let's get those out. We'll get our calibration weight, 100 grams. Stick the batteries in. Helps if you press the on button and not the calibrate button. <laughs> Sometimes I don't really, I shouldn't be let out. So that one should go to 100, 101, it's interesting. That one should go to 100, 100, and that one, 100. That's going to do it. All right, goes to 101 and then it's gone back, to, it's settled back to 100. So I think we're probably good to go on those. So the next thing we've got to do is we've got to lift the tail of the aircraft so that the 
the model is at the attitude of flight, which will be straight and level. Um, now it's probably going to be, if you wanted to use a spirit level, it's probably going to be along that cockpit demarcation line. On the full size, they have two little silver discs on the British or the Portuguese chipmunks. They have two little datum marks on the side of the fuselage and on the chipmunk. If you ever stand next to one, you'll, you'll see it. It's quite interesting. They're just silver circles with a, a dimple right in the middle. And that's the datum. But they're not on the Canadian ones. So, go figure. So what we need to do is level the aircraft so it's level and then we put these scales underneath the main gear and the tail gear. Okay, let's see how close this gets us. The issue is that we need to put the scales underneath the tail wheel so we need to have a platform there that we can put the scales on. That to me actually is fairly close to where we need it. Um, so I'm just going to use a spirit level, not an engineering one, I can't afford one, but a regular spirit level. I think. Tail needs to come up a fraction more. And there we have it. So the the bubble in the spirit level is now level. So I think we're probably pretty good. That looks looks about right to me. Okay, so now we put the um, the scales underneath the three pieces parts and we uh, see what we've got. So, the scores on the doors, we've got 512 grams on the tail. Starboard, we have 1833, 1775. Okay, now we need to measure from a datum and uh, spot the mistake. I've just done that with a spirit level on it and no canopy. So, do that again. And I'm really not awake today, am I? There's no battery in it. <laughs> right. Take two. <laughs> so, tail, four, four, five. Starboard, four. And we've got two, one, five, oh, and two, one, three, five. Two, one, five, oh, two, one, three, five. Okay. We can remove the scales, we don't need those again. Okay. Now all we need for this is to get the aircraft to that same angle again. But we need to do it kind of like this. Now we don't need the canopy on there, but we do need the spirit level so that we can get it back to where it was. So all I'm going to do is move this foam block forwards 
until the spirit level is centered. So there we are, we're back to the model in flying attitude. Okay, so what we need to do now, get rid of some of this clutter, we need to put some tape down on the on the table. I'm going to put one there, like that. And I'm going to use T square. mark where the centre of the tail wheel is on that piece of tape. Then we come to the main wheels, I put some tape on the table and then again I draw a, a perpendicular line from the axle of the main wheel to the tape. For this I'm going to use a slightly smaller engineer's square. except I didn't draw the datum. So I'm going to draw the datum, probably a bit odd position. Um, where do you think I should do the datum? I'm going to do the datum from the, the rear of the cowl. It's a bit of an odd Place to do it, I suppose. But that can be as odd as I like. The datum is marked, the center line of the wheels, main wheels are marked, and the center line of the tail wheel is marked on the desk with the model level. We can measure the distance between these points. Are you still with me with all these errors and corrections? Because <laughs> I'm kind of confused. So, let's take a piece of paper. We need to write down some distances. So, weights, tail, four, four, five. Starboard, two, one, five, zero. Port, Two, one, three, five. Now what we need to do is measure from the datum to the main gear. 99 millimetres. And the datum to the tail wheel, one metre sixty feet. So 1,063 millimetres, and that's the datum to tail wheel. With those measurements, I think we could probably work it out. So I have been upstairs, and I've <coughs> run the numbers through the calculator to find out what we've got. And basically, tail wheel weight 445, starboard 2150, port 2135, and then the distance from the datum to the mains and the datum to the tail wheel gives us these numbers here in blue. So then we multiply the weight of the starboard times the distance, which is 90, 99 from the datum to the main, which gives us 212850 from the port to the datum and the weight 211365. And then finally, if you take the tail wheel weight and times it by the distance to the datum, you get 473035. Okay, if you add those all together, you've got 897.250. You then divide it by the total weight, 4730 grams, and you end up with 189.693 millimeters aft of the datum. Now, if you recall, the datum was the back of the cowl. So on this ruler here, I've marked off 189 and a half, as close as I can get. We lay that on the model. On this side, <laughs> funnily enough, it's between the two C of G marks that I marked. 
I'm going to do it on the other side because I'm not sure which of those two marks was, I think that was my range. On this side, it's level with the rearmost mark, which is correct. So I think that, that goes to show that doing it with the scales is indeed very accurate and it does work. Um, it just needs a bit of multiplication to make it, uh, make it so. Now, would I do it that way? Probably not, because you've only got to be out by a digit. Um, and next thing you know, it's all, it's all not so good. And I'm not terribly good with the calculator, although the, the sums and the maths are, are fairly straightforward, so it's, it's not, not exactly rocket science. Um, so it, it's up to you. They both get a result. Um, weighing it is how the full size do it. Um, and it's possibly... Oh, I don't know. The, the jury is out on that. You do which, whichever you want. I just wanted to try it because, because of the comment that had been posted below the video. And I thought, hmm, yeah, why have I never done that? Anyway, my head hurts and I'm going to go and lie down. <laughs>